Hello, my dear friends and colleagues. It's my pleasure to welcome you in our channel, which is specialized in radiology reporting education in a step-by-step -step approach to get professional radiology reports. I am Dr. Islam Taha, radiology consultant and lecturer for radio diagnosis at Helwan University, and my dear friend Dr. Shadi Gamal will be together throughout the course. We will start our radiology reporting course with genital urinary module, and we will start today with CT urinary examination reporting. Before we start our course, we should know main points about our study. The first thing is the proper technique for the study, how it's done, and what are the preparations for the study. In our study, CT urinary tract, the patient must have distended urinary bladder during the study and no need for fasting or oral or IV contrast administrations. Other studies like CT urography, the patient will be injected IV contrast, so he must be fasting for four to six, to six hours before the study and the serum creatinine level must be normal. The technique for CT UT study, the patient Position must be supine with his arms above head. And we start the study with scout imaging, starting from the diaphragm to below the sensus pubis. Then the scan extent will be from above the kidneys to below the sensus pubis, and scan direction will be craniocaudal, in other means from the head direction down to the pelvis. The scan is done during an inspiration phase. The second thing is the proper history. We should get proper history from the patient, like the age of the patient, complain. In our CTUT study, it will be either blind or pelvic pain, or even hematuria or pelvic pain. We should ask for when the complaint started, the, whether it's acute or chronic, the duration of the complaint. Also, we should ask about the operation history and history of chronic diseases. We should also ask for prior studies done, if there's ultrasound scan or any other modality of imaging was done. The third thing, we should know the indications for the study to make sure it will help the referring doctor to get the diagnosis without doing unnecessary examinations or procedures. In our CTUT study, the indications are to assess the urinary tract for stones, back pressure, or even inflammatory changes. And the fourth thing and last thing is to get answers for the referring doctor questions. In this slide, we will see the report structure and how it's formulated. The report structure will, will, which will be used throughout the course, whether the case is the CT urinary tract or any other CT or MRI examination. We first start with the title, which mentions the type of the study, whether CT or MRI, and on which tract is the study done, and if there is a special technique done, like in CT uh, case of triphasic or dynamic studies, and the last thing, if there is multiplanar reformatted images or not. As we see here in CT urinary tract, the title is multi slice non contrast CT scan of the urinary tract with curved and the multiplanar reformatted images revealed. After the title is the technique, which describes the technique by which the study was done. In our study CT, we may describe the technique or not, but better to describe the technique of the study. In MRI, we should enumerate the study sequences done, and if there is special technique done, our special. Uh, sequence or contrast enhanced uh, sequences was taken. The third part of the skeleton of the report is the main findings. Here we have checklist which must comment on during the reporting, either uh, it's normal or there is abnormality. In our CTUT study, we must comment on the renal tract stones. Then we comment on the kidneys, uh, either size and brain sickness, uh, and if there is back pressure changes. And the last comment we should uh, comment on the urinary bladder and if there is other abnormality uh, during scan. The fourth part of the report is the opinion, which must be concise and to the point without detailed descriptions. The last part of the report skeleton is the reporting doctor signature. Let's now start with what you need to look at our scheme in case of CT of the urinary tract or CTUT. First thing at the stones, whether uh, it is seen in kidneys, ureter, or within the urinary bladder. We must comment on the size of the stone and attenuation value, which is measured in Hounsfield unit. Uh, and we will see here in a real case how to measure the size and attenuation values of the stones. The second thing is the effect of these stones, if there is back pressure changes or not, whether uh, these uh, back pressure changes are affecting the pelvic cell system or even the ureters, and we should comment on the extent and degree of back pressure changes. The third thing is the renal size and cortical parenchyma, and if there is uh, renal masses or uh, cysts or uh, any abnormality in the uh, renal parenchyma. The 
and other urological findings which we should comment on uh, are the uh, other organs like uh, pros uh, prostate or uh, even gynecological organs. Uh, other non-urological findings also we, uh, must be commented like hepatomegaly, splenomegaly or uh, even any other abnormality in the abdomen. After looking at the study in the forementioned scheme, we will learn how to report and describe the findings in clear and short terms and we will know how to formulate the opinion in clear and concise words with the final diagnosis of the case. Now we will start in uh, our uh, real case study and uh, we start with uh, the history. This is a male uh, patient, uh, history of uh, bilateral line pain. Uh, the patient age as uh, here shown is 34 years old. And uh, as we uh, discussed in the previous presentation, this is the scout image and we take from the uh, below the diaphragm uh, down to the sepsis pubis. Then uh, the cut, uh, the uh, scan images are scanned from the uh, above the kidney down to below the urinary bladder to ensure that all the urinary tract is covered during the scan. As we see here, we start our uh, examination by scanning from above downwards in the axial images. We sh uh, should make sure that uh, we uh, start on uh, the source uh, axial source images, which are more than uh, 500 uh, images. Uh, these images are taken every one millimeter. As we see here, we start by scanning the kidney for renal stones and back pressure changes. Uh, we start by the right kidney, as we see, uh, the right kidney show renal stones, which are hyperdense uh, in upper, middle, and lower calices. The left kidney see also uh, left middle calyx. And upper calyx, they show dense stones. I think there is no stones in the left lower calyx. So we have multiple bilateral renal stones uh, scattered within uh, all calcial system, sparing the left lower calyx. After scanning the kidneys, we start for looking for the pelvic calcial system and excluding the uh, back pressure changes. As we see here, the pelvic calcial system on the right, it appears normal, no back pressure changes. Then we Continue with the ureter as we see here. It's in front of the uh, psoas muscle. And we should pass through the uh, course of the ureter down to the renal bladder, not to miss any small dense stones. The ureter, as we see, is not dilated and no uh, dense stones within down to its pelvic course. And here it enters the urinary bladder. On the left side, we will see if there is back pressure changes or any uh, ureteric back pressure changes or stones. As we see here, there is mild dilatation of the left pelvic cell system compared to the right. Here there is mild dilatation. There is also fullness in the pelvic cell system or the renal pelvis. We also see here mild dilatation of the left ureter and we find there is a small dense stone within the proximal left ureter. Here, the stone is seen within the uh, proximal left ureter and causing mild proximal uh, back pressure changes. We continue with the course of the ureter down to the uh, urinary bladder. down to urinary bladder. Here, it enters the urinary bladder. After that, we look at the urinary bladder, if there is uh, any stones, uh, uh, any mural uh, wall thickening, any abnormalities. There is no abnormality in the urinary bladder. After that, we look for the prostate. The patient is 34 years old, and uh, we look for prostatomegaly after the age of 40. 
So uh, this patient uh, has normal prostate, seminal vesicles also, also normal. Uh, we have uh, scanned all the urinary tract, so we will see how to write the abnormalities in the report. After scanning, we should know where is the largest uh, renal stone and measure it. As we mentioned, we will see how to measure the renal stone. We start by uh, measuring the length of the stone. We see here the right medical CS stone is measuring about five millimeter, and then we measure the density or Hounds field unit about six hundred. That we measure the density of the ureteric stone, as we see here. Measure the length is about millimeter, and then measure the density is about 500. Now we will see how to formulate a, a, a professional report. Here we start uh, the uh, report by the uh, pathology which causes a problem to the patient. Here the problem is uh, the ureteric stone which is obstructing stone. So we will start our report with the ureteric stone, not the renal stones. The uh, description of the stone uh, is very simple. Left proximal ureteric small stone is seen measuring about six millimeter in diameter with mean CT attenuation uh, equals 500 Hounsfield unit, as we discussed. Uh, consequent mild proximal dilatation of the draining ureter and pelvic cell system. And the distal ureter is, is mildly ectatic as we see, not dilated, but, but ectatic. The second point is uh, the description of the renal stones. Here we see a few bilateral small uh, stones uh, slash gravels are seen scattered within post renal calcial groups, sparing the left lower calyx. As we said, it's uh, uh, there is no left lower calcial stone. The largest is seen at the middle. Uh, calyx measures about five millimeter with mean CT attenuation uh, measuring about uh, three uh, seven hundred uh, Hounsfield units. Then we will uh, say that there is no urinary dense stones detected along the uh, abdominal or pelvic courses of the right ureter or within the urinary blood. After that, we will comment on the kidneys. Both kidneys are of average size, showing smooth outline with preserved parenchymal thickness, and there is no right. Uh, renal pack pressure changes. That we will say uh, comment on the uh, right ureter, which is uh, average course and caliber of the right ureter. Finally, we will comment on the urinary bladder, uh, which is a regular filling of the urinary bladder with no sizable masses or diverticular outpouching. After uh, commenting on the urinary tract, we should uh, have a, a look on the other abdominal organs. Uh, we start by the largest uh, organ, which is the liver. And here we see uh, in the axial images, the liver is uh, show a normal uh, parenchymal density with no hepatic focal lesions. The second uh, thing after the liver is the spleen. We see here the spleen uh, show normal density also with no uh, detected abnormality on non-contrast spaces. After that, look at the adrenal glands are normal, no uh, adrenal nodules or masses. After that, we look at the pancreas, so non normal non-contrast uh, appearance. After looking at the pancreas, we should look at the uh, GIT tract. Here, start from the stomach. There is no abnormality. Pyloric antrum. Duodenum. As we see, the jejunum and iliac bowel loops all are normal. Then we look at the right iliac fossa and the cecum. No abnormality. Ascending colon. No mural thickening or any abnormalities with clear surrounding fat planes. The hepatic flexure. Then transverse colon. Then we scan. Uh, uh, see the splenic flexure 
no detected abnormality, descending colon, also normal, <clears throat> down to the sigmoid colon and rectum. No detected abnormalities along the uh, alimentary tract. Then we look for lymph nodes along the vessels. Uh, here, uh, aorta, IVC, aortocaval region, no abnormalities, no lymph nodes, uh, port hepatic regions, no aortocaval or paraaortic lymph nodes, no iliac, common iliac, or external or internal iliac lymph nodes. After that, we have a rapid look on the uh, abdominal wall if there is uh, any hernial orifices or any abnormalities. There is no hernial orifice. Also, in the inguinal region, there is no hernial uh, sacs detected. Steer abdominal uh, wall, also there is no abnormality. We also look at the lungs if the, uh, it is apparent in the scans. There is no detected abnormality. Then we look at the sagittal images. Here we see bones. kidney in the sagittal uh, images and we also look for the bone. Bone window is also important to scan for any abnormalities if there is a slippage in the bone or uh, there is uh, any marrow infiltrative lesions. As we see here the patient has fixation of the lower dorsal and upper lumbar vertebrae using plates and screws so we should mention this uh, side finding in the report. As we see in the axial images, there is a uh, spinal laminectomy, multi level spinal laminectomies, and uh, internal fixations in the lower dorsal and uh, upper lumbar vertebrae using plates and screws. So we mentioned this side findings uh, as uh, seen in the last paragraph. Uh, multi-level spinal laminectomy with internal fixation of the visualized lower dorsal and upper lumbar vertebrae using plates and screws causing metallic artifact. This patient has uh, a plain x-ray of the abdomen. We should also comment on it if it is done uh, uh, at the same time with the patient. So we will add it. and multi-slice CT scan of the renal tract. The importance of this uh, plain UT is to see if these uh, the, the images or the stones uh, described are uh, visualized or apparent or opaque in the plain UT uh, image. Uh, as we see, uh, there is a proximal ureteric stone. It appears here faintly uh, opaque. So we must say it is, it appears. Take the plain UT. Also, the bilateral renal stones. Uh, I can uh, see uh, faint shadows here. Uh, uh, this is the colon, and this is faint uh, big shadows uh, along the course of the right kidney. Uh, left side, I can see. Or detect any stones which was seen previously in the um, CT images. So we will say some of of few of these stones are hardly seen in the plain UT film. The last thing is how to formulate the opinion. As we said, we start with the main problem, which is the obstructing ureteric stone. There is uh, the opinion, as we see, is left proximal ureteric small stone with mild proximal back pressure changes. And uh, the second uh, paragraph is bilateral renal small stones and the gravels. And uh, the other abnormality of uh, uh, spinal amniotomy is not mentioned in the uh, opinion as uh, this is a urinary 
city of the urinary tract. Uh, thanks for uh, your uh, attention and uh, see you uh, in the next videos.